Today, we have many things to talk about, but before we get into today's apostolic mandate, uh, the 22nd apostolic mandate, by the way, this is on August 8, 2021. Know that what we need to look at first is to get some confirmation about last week's, the 21st apostolic mandate, working with angels. And the reason why I feel that is uh, prompt and proper to share this with you before we get started in today's message is because I believe it'll give you some real understanding how fast we're moving into what God's calling us to do and seeing the results of it. So I will go to and pull that up, the part that I'm looking at. This is the second page and the 21st apostolic mandate. And you'll see that this is talking about calling fire down from heaven. And I'll just read it. This week at the start of the calling down from, from heaven, this fire will we are talking about is not the anointing of God, but rather his wrath. This method of working with angels is not seen or experienced often. For this reason, we will need to learn quickly what our part is in the massive undertaking, in this massive undertaking. Most Christians will not believe this is God's way. However, if they study the Holy Scriptures, they would see that God is a true father, a father that does not coddle his enemies, nor passive when protecting his children. Now, I'm going to go through these three declarations and decrees, but it's the last one that it should catch your attention. I declare and decree I will cry out the name of Jesus when needed. Two, I declare and decree I will, I will ask God to send his angels to deliver justice and remove the ungodly works of the holy, of the works of the worldly. Now, um, I'll bring it to your attention here in just a minute what I want to show you, but look at this. Look at this verse three, oh, not verse three, but declaration three. As a prophetic sign, I will anoint my feet with oil to release the full power of God's fire and brimstone, to release God's fire and brimstone. Now, I don't know if you've been doing this, anointing your feet each day, but I want to give unto you something that will give you good reason to do so. This is a testimony that came in on August 4th. Now, that was just, what, uh, just a few days, two days, maybe after the Sunday program. But look what it says. It says this email that came to me, this is a confirmation of what God has said. That's what, that's what I wrote in here. Testimony 21 mandate confirms God wants us to anoint our feet with oil. This e email was addressed to Apostle Kent's, Prophet Kent Simpson. Yesterday, I tried to open a lid of, on a, of a glass that it was impossible. I tried again and again, many times, but I couldn't do it. Before I gave up, I asked the Lord to help me. And I said to him, if you want me to open it, I will make it. But if you don't want to, I can't do it. Then I put my hand on the lid to open it, and suddenly the lid was open. I was in shock. I was shocked and surprised, but very happy. It is a coconut oil organic in a glass. I'm starting to put it on my feet now every day. Now, this is, comes from Edith Ness from Norway, who I've known a number of years who's been a partner with us for probably over 20 years, easy. And she's been very faithful, but also she's a very um, private person, not really one who's wanting to get in front of any camera, that's for sure. But she has an ability to do what God desires her to do. And when she desires to do what God wants, he makes a way. And he made a way for her in this situation, but it also is a confirmation unto us that God is really ready to start releasing that power to bring down fire and brimstone. Now, what is he re referring to? His wrath. You know, you can, you can push God a long ways for his long suffering, but you can only push him so far until it has a retraction. And that retraction has a boomerang that will come back upon those who have done harm to his people. He will not coddle his enemies and he will protect his children. We are his children. Now, I want you to take note at the angel here behind me, it's a statue. It's one of the many statues we have in our home and out on our, on our property, because we know that these symbols are symbolic for more than just having something nice looking in your house or your yard. It is an attraction to the angelic host of God. It is also symbolic to the fact that even in the tabernacle of old, God had their angels placed within the walls of that tabernacle. You have to go read it to find out. But let me just say this, this angel has his foot on Satan's head. 
and holding the scales of justice. Now, what that angel also has in his hand is a sword. I thought this was very much of a, not just a symbol so much, but also a pronouncement that judgment has come. You remember not too many months ago, actually as apostolic 10, God wanted to start going through a prophetic signing to let know unto all the spirits that were of the evil to be put on notice that vengeance is coming. Remember that as we we're going to the four corners of the room and we were doing our signing as letting it be known. And then we stopped and then God had to start doing what? Doing something, a little addition, which was releasing the fragrance of his knowledge out the window for salvation. Then we came to a place where God says, now begin to anoint your feet. That was just last week because he's going to bring fire and brimstone down. Now, why do these things have any meaning? Why does this have any connection at all? Because it's simply obeying God's word. That's what it is. You know, you might think, well, that's not a big deal. It doesn't seem to be anything that is related to calling down fire from heaven, but it is because it's the way God said, do it. And that's all you need to know. And that's all you need to do. His burden is, is easy and his yoke is light. He doesn't make it so doggone hard. You can't figure out how to do it. And I think it's pretty simple knowing how to anoint your feet with oil. Now I mentioned in the program last week that I use um, coconut oil. It's organic. And I use it for the purpose of what God said some time ago. I've been doing it for months, but I've done it for a long time in many different times of the, of the year that I've had been called to do it. It was for a purpose. And I've always seen that purpose fulfilled because why obedience doing what God said. Now I think that's ought to give you some attention there and a wake up call, if nothing else, for those who may not be practicing this particular sign, but it is something that will be very beneficial to you, especially in the days ahead. You know, there are a lot of people who have basically given up on everything, but I, I'm sad to say that they're going to be totally uh, feel, feel very uh, conscionable of the fact that they have really disobeyed God. They've really lacked trust in God. And that's a, a real problem that we have in the church at large, not so much in PMT, but in the, in the more, um, what do we say, worldly places, terrestrial churches, they are, they are more connected to the things of this world and not so much the spirit. So, with that said, we're going to start talking about evil spirits, know their spirits. And we're going to start with the very first part of this is going to give you some insight into some things that are going to probably make you take a double look. This is the second 22nd apostolic mandate. Know their spirit, know whose spirit. What are we doing here? The soul of an evil spirit is what God's referencing to. God is preparing to receive the knowledge. You, God is preparing you to receive the knowledge how to know the evil, the mind of an evil spirit. Before you can cast the evil spirit out of a person, you first need to know the inner workings of the possessed. Once you have gained that knowledge, how to cast out an evil spirit, then your appointed angel can be directed and remove that demon. Now, I want to stop right there for just a minute. What are we saying here? We're saying that God says you need to know the mind of that evil spirit. How do you know the mind of an evil spirit? You ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the inner workings within this evil spirit. How is he maneuvering through that one who's possessed? How does this thing work? What is what's being whispered into the mind of that individual who is following that evil spirit, who's doing the bidding of that evil spirit under the auspice of Satan himself? As an ambassador of Satan, we refer to them sometimes because they are doing his work. Now, you might think, well, that's an odd thing to say. Why would you ever ask God to do that? Because God wants you to know why they do it, how they do it, and what makes it tick within the inside. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of testimony here because you need to know this in order to go forward. Many years ago, I say many, it's probably been close to 10 years now. I've I've run into a number of people who have been um, molested his children. I do a lot of counseling have, I'm not doing as much as I used to, but I used to do a lot of it. And I would run across that many, many times. And I just got really, really 
disgusted with this, this happening. And I wanted to know, how does this happen? And I asked the Lord, Lord, show me what makes somebody do this. I don't understand it. I don't get it. And so the Lord began to slowly process, process my thinking in a way that sometimes really was not so challenging as it was, I couldn't, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I couldn't believe what I was seeing, how these things were happening. Why were people doing this? Well, this is a very powerful spirit, this spirit of pedophilia. And we will see that this pedophilia can be destroyed, can be totally turned around. And the way you do it, I'll tell you here in just a minute. Now, as I began to look into this, as God was giving me sight, and it wasn't all at one time, it came in bits and pieces over a period of two or three years. Then there came a place to where all of a sudden I realized that I could see people. And just like I can look across the, the restaurant and notice somebody, I just by the, just by the way I've experienced that, that appearance of that person, they are a Christian. I can go over and ask them and they'll tell me, even a spirit-filled Christian, the difference between the two. You can even tell when there's somebody who has definitely an evil spirit about them because they can look like it. They have a particular facial expression or there's some kind of gesture or something that gives it up. But how can you know when you can't even see the person when you don't even know their name? That's, that's when you know it's really the spirit of God giving you the information. So as I continued to look into this and wanting to know more about it, because I wanted to break it, I wanted to destroy that evil spirit. I wanted to come after it. I wanted to protect. We have a lot of grandchildren. I want to protect them from this evil spirit. And so the Lord took me into a, a deeper, deeper understanding of it. And some of the things that have been abating and abiding this thing and causing it to happen. Of course, a lot of it's happening in the world and a lot of different um, chemical products are doing it to them as they buy it in pill form or injection. And it causes them to be aroused in this area, which only amplifies their pedophilia. So not to con concentrate on those things, but we've got to look into this to know what we're talking about. So the Lord began to show me what made someone start going this way and what com continued to prompt it. Now we know in the scripture it says, do not entertain the devil, but resist him and he will flee. Well, that's the first thing. Don't give it any thought. Well, you just said, Kent, ask God to show you. I did, but I wasn't entertaining the spirit. The Lord was showing me about the spirit, telling me about that. Isn't it good to know about your enemy? Isn't that what you do when you're in warfare? You want to know what your enemy has. That's what recon's all about. And that's essentially what we're doing this week is moving into a deeper part of recon. We're finding out what's working in the inside of our enemy. What is the thinking of our enemy? What is the plan of our enemy? Because we're going to see that we can do something without ever making any contact, any type of communication whatsoever. It's all by the spirit because that's where our war is in spiritual warfare. And so as we begin to move into this, we see that God begins to open up many doors. Now, here's, let me tell you how far this can go. I was in a counseling session. Now, it wasn't with a, a child. It was with actually a woman who wasn't even married and had no children. As she began to be concerned about her sister and her sister's daughter, who was about 10 years of age. Now, I've never met the daughter uh, or sister either. But as the woman was talking to me about the situation, there was one thing she said that all of a sudden the Lord started downloading information about this father of this child who was separated from the mother, who was the sister of the lady I was counseling. So as I told the sister of the mother of the child, I said, look, this is what you're going to have to do. This is what's happening. And I told her, and then I told her, you need to take the child and go to the police station. Now the child's not going to want to say anything because she's been programmed not to but you have a female police officer, ask her the questions and she'll know what to ask. And when she does, she will pull it out of her and she will let you know what she finds out. Now they did this just within the same week. And they came back and told me that, yes, they went to the police off police station. And there was a police officer who was a female who did the questioning. She came out and said, you need to immediately take this child to the hospital and have them do a particular procedure to find out if she had been violated. Sure enough, she had been. So arrangements were being made to put her daddy on notice and to put him on notice he was about to be arrested. Well, the man hung himself before the time ever came for that to happen. And so I was sad for the child, naturally. And it was a very great concern. There was much need to be able to 
do more counseling at that time. But here's my point. If I had not been seeking God to teach me how to know the spirit and know what that spirit is of, doesn't it say in first John four and one to test the spirit and know that spirits of God. Well, we know that spirit's not of God. I don't, any, I don't care what way you look at it. That's not a spirit of God. Suffer not the children. That's what the scripture says. And so as we look into these things, you're going to find one other thing that we're going to go into. But before we do, let's continue with the first part of the mandate on the first page that we were just on. Now, second paragraph, being one of the elect of God's special remnant, you will soon perfect this knowledge to remove evil spirits from individuals as well as, listen, as well as large groups of possessed souls. Now, I think you've got in mind pretty well already of those groups that might be coming to your four thoughts real quick. However, you must follow closely from the video and podcast. You will hear testimony about this process. My personal training under the spirit of Jesus. Well, and by the way, I said in the spirit of Jesus, maybe you don't ever hear that term very often or that particular titling, but just let me say this. The Holy spirit is the spirit of Jesus. Can you get it? Can you understand it? If you don't read, read the book, only one God. And you'll, you'll understand more what I'm saying, but as the spirit of Jesus will hopefully expedite your understanding. So you don't have to take years to understand what's going on in the thinking of that evil spirit with your feet anointed with the oil each day, you will be out of reach from the evil one. Do you hear that? The evil one can't touch you for it is God's will for you to learn this method of casting out de the demonic in reference to first John five and 18. If you're doing the will of God, the anointed one, you, you, if you're doing the will of God, the evil one can't touch you. Now, let me just say this. This, this falls in line with knowing this is the will of God because we just had a testimony come in that this is what God's proving to the fact for one of our partners that you are supposed to be doing this. Now, I know it because I heard God, but you need to have those confirmations to give you that substance to be able to have enough belief to go forward. It is written, the evil spirit answered and said to Jesus, Jesus said, said, Jesus, I know, because here's the disciples had been around doing some work, ministering and casting out demons, healing sick. And this fellow just decided, well, hey, all I got to do is use the name of Jesus, and I can do the same thing they're doing. Well, here's what happened. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, but who are you to the fellow that was trying to cast out demons and didn't have Jesus in his heart? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on to them. In other words, the spirit that was in the man he was trying to deliver came out of that man, jumped on him, leaped on him, overpowered him, and prevailed against him so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. They became known both to all the Jews and the Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on them, and all the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the name of the Lord Jesus Christ was magnified, Acts 19, 15. Therefore, um, I make known to you that no one speaking by the spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians 12, three. Now you might think, well, that's strange. Why'd you put that in brother Kent? That's not even in the book of Acts. You're in a totally different book of the Bible. It's true because I want you to understand you cannot say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. What are you talking about? You mean you, anybody can say Jesus is Lord? Well, you might say so, but you can't see any power come of it unless it's by the Holy Spirit. My point is that you must have God giving you God and direction of what it is to say whenever you cast out a demon, because you can't say come out of that person in the name of Jesus if Jesus didn't tell you to. That's exactly what that means. Now, maybe you don't see it that way. Maybe you think, well, I don't have to do that. All I got to do is shout and holler and, and, and jump up and down and, and scream at it until it finally comes out of that person. Well, I don't find that to work. And what I found to work uh, bears truth from scripture. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus didn't go crazy pulling out his hair, trying to get a demon out. No, he just said, come out or going to the pigs, you know, whatever. He just told that spirit, whatever God told him to say. And that's what I'm saying. You cannot speak on behalf of the Lord unless you're using the words he's told you to speak. And then, then that angel knows that they have the green light to do what you just said, come out. And that, that angel will take that demon out and take him wherever God says for it to go. And maybe you don't know, even know, 
but all you may, all you had to say was come out and it came out, but the Lord will take care of that evil spirit. And that's what this is all about. Not only in one person, we're talking about groups, mass groups of people. This is something that's going to begin to bring people to Jesus too. You understand that casting out of that demon came because why that man tried to cast out a demon. They saw he couldn't do it. And the demon came out of the man and just stripped your neck and chased him out of town. Now that brought a lot of attention. You got a streaker running down the street at a, at a prayer meeting. Well, let's talk about it from a straight point. They re realized that they, you have to be like Paul. You have to be like Peter. You have to be like Jesus in order to see this work. You got to do it the way Jesus taught us. And that's what I'm teaching you today as you must do it in accordance with those things that God has said and what he's saying to you right now, what he's saying to you today, because it's, it's paramount. It's so important. Not what you think you need to say, what you know you need to say. So let's go on to page two, because we got more stuff to go through today. And I'm glad to be able to get through it because it is interesting and it'll be helpful to you. The 22nd apostolic mandate, know, thy, know their spirit, praying and asking the Holy Spirit to reveal to the evil spirit within a possessed person or group of people sounds as strange. In the beginning, I asked God, what are we doing? <laughs> you know, and really the fact was, I, I wanted to know what, what are we doing here? God, this is kind of, this is bizarre. What are we doing? When he began to open my soul to see into the mind of a pedophile, our Lord answered me, you asked me to give you the power over this type of evil spirit. He was right. I did ask. I just didn't know this was the, his way of doing it. Now, I know, and you will too. In the declarations this week, I think you'll find these to be helpful. In the first one, I declare and decree God to teach me how to overpower the evil spirit standing on your hill, and we will take it back for you. What, what are we talking about? What is the hill? What is he talking about the hill? Okay, let me get into that just a minute, and then we'll come back to the other two de declarations for this week. You need to pick a, a particular hill. And what is a hill? Well, let's just look at it from a standpoint of some of those, some of you know about the Vietnam War, and you knew they were constantly taking hill, hill 284, whatever hill it was. And everybody run up that hill and fighting and take over the hill. And then they'd say, okay, retreat, go to another place. And then the enemy come take the hill back. Well, we're not going to let them take the hill back. But the, my point is your hill has to be what God is directing you to. What is the number one thing that really sets you on edge when you hear it, see it, or spoke, or it's been spoken about in an area that just really bothers you? Maybe it, maybe it's the the COVID factor. Maybe it's maybe it's God. Maybe maybe it's God being removed from the schools. Maybe it's children and what's happening to the children. Maybe it's government and what's happening in the government. Maybe it's what's happening in freedom. Maybe it's something that is entirely different for you than it is for any else. Cause there's a number of things you go through the crime, the, the mismanagement of cities and, and States. There's a, there's a number of things or even elections or whatever it is. You find your hill, you claim your hill and you ask God to reveal to you how to deal with that demon. That's on that hill. You need to take the hill. You need to remove that evil spirit off that hill and claim it for Jesus. And it shall remain. So because that appointed angel that ministers for you shall see it through. And she'll see, see that position held for as long as we need it, as long as it's believed it will stay. So let's go on to the next part of this, because like I said, we got a lot to get through today and let's go to the second one. I declare and decree. I trust you Lord with my life and that you will use me to make the difference for your people. Why does it say for your life? Well, are you, you got to go into this battle ready to give up everything in order to win the battle. And I believe a lot of people are there now. Maybe they weren't last year, but they are now. They're ready to take the hill and fight to get the hill and then retain the hill for Jesus. Number three, I declare and decree that continue wearing to continue wearing the sacred cloth and anoint my feet daily for the protection and power to call down all consuming fire and brimstone. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. What's well, what it's all about. We're bringing the raft of God. And you'll see it. You'll see it in a way that will be undeniable. It is written. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling this girl 
followed Paul and us and cried out saying, these men are the servants of the most high of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour, Acts 16, 16. Now, the point taken here is that Apostle Paul did exactly what we're talking about. How long did he wait before he called, turned around and turned to that girl to cast the demon out? Many days, it says. Many days. Why did he wait so long? He had to wait until he found out what the Holy Spirit would wanted him to say. He had to know he had the assurance and the, and the confirmation, and he had also the, the promise that that thing would happen when he spoke it. He couldn't just do it because he could say the words. That's not the problem. Pronouncing the words is not the issue. Having the backing for that word is the problem. Most people don't usually have it in place. So another thing, why would that be so annoying that this gal was saying these are the ones that lead you to the most high through salvation? Why would that be such a bad thing? Why was it so disrupting to Paul? Because he knew it was not a spirit of God. This woman was not speaking from a spirit that is of a spirit of God, but a spirit of evil to distract, to confuse, to ward away. And she might've even been say, saying it in a way that seemed to be snotty. She could have been just one who was harassing and making it look like she was trying to be somebody she's not, a, you know, a poser, being a fake. And, you know, we do have wolves come in sheep clothing, but if you have the ability to be able to know that spirit and know the thinking and the, and the, and the process of that spirit, you can cast it out. You can cast it out because God will show you and he'll show you what to do and when to do it. It may not be saying even a word. He may have you do something. Oh, I could tell you another story real quick. If, if you want, want to hear a story, I'll give you some example here. Now, this was early on. This was in the early 90s, and uh, I was in a particular church that I was ministering at, and I was going to deal with people who had been hearing evil spirits who could not get rid of those spirits that kept speaking into their ear. And I asked them after this. I said, if you stay after the service, I'll be glad to pray for you, and we'll see you delivered of those spirits that are hindering you. Well, this one gentleman who was a visitor to the church and his uh, girlfriend was a regular member, he stayed and he came up the front and he said, um, uh, he said, I, I, uh, I've got this music playing in my head all the time and I can't stop it. I don't know where it comes from. It's not even the kind of music I like, but I can't stop it. It just constantly playing in my head. And so I asked him, I said, well, sit down here. Will you sit down and will you let me pray for you? He said, yeah. So he's sitting down and I, so I began to ask the Lord, you know, what, what do we do here, Lord? And Lord said, anoint him with oil. So I asked if anybody had some oil and we got some oil together. And so I said, okay, close your eyes. I began to pray. And I'm thinking, I have him have his hands up, his hands raised. I thought I was going to anoint his palms, but then the Lord said, ask him where he got his palms red. Well, I thought, okay, well, that's, that's interesting. He said, well, I never had my palm red. I said, okay. So I started praying again. Lord said, ask him where he had his palms read. Now that happened three times. After the third time, the Lord said, ask him where he was stationed in the military. And so I asked him, he said, well, I was stationed in, I was in the Navy and I was stationed in Hawaii. Then all of a sudden it came to him. Oh yeah, that's where I got my palm read. Well, we know that was God. He couldn't remember. God had to bring it back to his remembrance. And then, so I surely thought I was going to be anointing his palm, but that's not what God said. And the Lord said, watch now. He said, watch. And so I'm watching, I'm watching, maybe looking at his palms. They said, look, the Lord said, look at his forehead. All of a sudden, a black dot came up on his forehead. Now, it didn't appear in the natural, but in the spirit, it was there. The Lord said, touch it, touch it now. So I touched it and that man's head popped back like he had a whiplash. I, I seriously thought, I just barely touched him now, but I seriously thought the man had really hurt himself jerking back like that but he said it's gone he said the sound's gone he said it, i can't hear that music anymore and i don't want to ever hear that music again and we talked about him coming to the lord and you know he made a pronouncement of his salvation and so we went on from there but here's my point don't assume anything you gotta wait till god tells you what to do now don't get in that rut where some people do they just keep waiting and waiting and waiting because they're not looking for it 
They're kind of waiting because they're afraid they might be told something they don't want to do or they want, or they look foolish. So they're even doubting what God says. You can't get that way. You've got to be very quick. I mean, it's, you've got to jump in the pool when the trouble water is troubled by that angel. You understand what I'm saying? And maybe you will, maybe you will, but anyway, let's go on to the next page. Got tons of stuff to go through. Let's read that scripture. Oh, we, we already did. We already read that scripture. All right. This is the last page. This is the last part of the mandate. To the elect remnant of God, you are about to be launched into a spiritual arena, a new spiritual arena. Fear me, says our Lord and Savior, and you will fear nothing else. I will take you into the inner works of our enemy's soul. You will witness the mind and works of the Luciferic. They will not be able to harm you. This spiritual recon is not for the babes in Christ. Only the spiritually mature will be called upon. When I call you, I will equip you with my angels to do my bidding. It is written, and this is a long verse of scripture, so bear with me because it's going to, there's a lesson in it, but also it's going to confirm some things. And when he had called his 12 disciples to him, talking about Jesus, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases, Matthew 10 and 1. But as these men, as the disciples went out and saw many wonders, many signs and wonders and miracles as they prayed for people, they came upon one person and they could not remove this one spirit and they could not cast it out. So this man whose son, they couldn't cast the demon out of him, came to Jesus, said, Lord, have mercy on my soul, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, oh, foolish, faithless, oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why could we not cast it out? Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief. For assuredly, I say unto you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain or to this hill, move from here and that to there, and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Matthew 17, 15 through 21. And you will find to this be very helpful, I hope, because Jesus is still calling people out to go cast out demons. He's still calling people out to go heal the sick. He's still calling people to prayer and fasting. Now you want to talk about prayer and fasting. Let me let me give you some insight into what he's saying here in prayer and fasting, because why did all the other spirits come out of the, all the other people they prayed for, but not this one? What was the difference? Because Jesus is saying, you're going to have to go deeper. You're going to have to seek in deeper. You're going to have to know you're going to have to stop what you're doing and, and look into a new direction. And that new direction is, is you need to look into that spirit and know what it is that you need to do. What's it going to require for you to separate yourself from the things of the world. You're going to have to give it a little bit more time. You're going to, have to spend a little bit more time seeking the Holy spirit, seeking God, the father. And if you do this, then you will get your answer of what to do. Now, Jesus knew what to do because Jesus was doing it all the time. I mean, he was, did nothing except, but, a, but what he saw the father do. And he only spoke what he heard the father say. And, and that's what, what Jesus is even saying here, when he's saying fasting, you automatically think food. That's not what he's talking about here. He's saying, set more time aside to seek me, find me, and I will tell you what to do. Let me show you how to deal with this spirit, because obviously they hadn't come across this spirit. And believe me, people, there are spirits on different levels, just like there's angels on different levels. I think you know the difference between archangel and an angel of healing. Raphael, an angel of healing, Michael, an archangel. There's also other archangels, but there's all kinds of angels. No, not just the, only the ones that are spoken of in the Bible, but there are many, many others. But there's also 
on a hierarchy and the powers of evil as well. And we're going to see much of that, but listen to me. He that's in you is greater than the greatest in the world. Believe me, the least of us has more power than the power of anyone in the world by an evil spirit. Now you might say, well, I don't believe that. Well, if you attack it according to the things of the natural, yeah, they'll overpower you. But if you come at it with the spirit of God, with the spirit of the Holy Ghost who gives him to you the ability to be able to see those things that no one else could reveal to you, to deal with things that you don't even have to deal with it, because all you got to do is that small part and the angel will do the rest. And you will see that you, they will be, <laughs> they will be ones who will find themselves totally helpless. Now, one thing we're going to do this week is we're going to begin to, to bring confusion into the enemy's camp. Now, the way we're going to do that in this Luciferic um, dominion of our government, we're going to begin to call forth those things as though they were without the evidence of things yet seen. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to us what to pray, what to say, what to prophesy. And when we pray, we will obey, and we will prophesy what he tells us to say. And that will remove out of the, this large mass that will begin to give unto them a babble, a babble. Yeah, I said babble. They will not be able to communicate because what's going to happen, he's going to give you the ability to be able to rattle their knowledge, to scramble them like a word scramble. Have you ever played scrabble? And you move all the letters around and shift them around, and then you just draw them out as you go. Well, we're, God's going to take it like the Tower of Babel and cause it all to be misjubbled. In other words, they'll, they'll be messing up all over the place. They can't get it straight. They'll keep dropping the ball every time they try to pick up something to go with something to make a change to try to protect themselves. Because right now, they're going to get very, very defensive. They're going to get very aggressive. And they will find themselves just like it was in the Bible where the, all they had to do was play the instruments and the instruments and made all kinds of sounds with pots and pans clanging. And it scared them. And they thought there was a whole military coming and they all ran, ran away and they never did even see them. They never did see them coming. They didn't know there wasn't that many and there's not many of us, but we can see that same system begin to work in the spirit to de-shovel them into a place to where they can't even think straight much less do anything that will make any difference to protect themselves because they're about to be stripped naked and left in the middle of all their things that they've done and be caught red handed. And it's coming. It's coming very quick and you'll see. Now I'm going to leave you with this as it is. That's the conclusion of apostolic mandate 22. If any of you notes that you want today, I'll be glad to send them to you. Remember, there's a lot more material you will receive in an email from me. If you email me and ask for Apostolic Mandate 22, you will receive more than just the mandate. And that information that you get is things that I really don't talk about on live air. Okay. So if you want to know some of those underling things, just email me. And we have a vetting process in that. So we know who's who. Okay. Now, I'm going to cover one more thing. And this is just basically, um, an update on a prophecy, prophecy number 14 from November, um, 2020 from 2020. So let's look at that real quick. And then we can talk, call it a day. This from November 29th, 2020 camo stars and stripes. Remember that one prophecy 14. All right. Listen and learn placing the microphone in the hands of Trump. All cameras are pointed in his direction and everyone will hear what he has to say. My people will say, how does it feel? to have your voice taken away. Now that we have your attention, listen and learn where the lies have led you astray. Uh, doesn't that sound familiar? What we talked about earlier, no longer shall you muzzle my man. No longer shall you muzzle my man. God's speaking about the president, nor hinder my nations from leading the world into my righteousness. My direction will come to those who hear my angels. You will soon learn that they can do what they can do for you. You'll learn what these angels can do for you. They are defenders of truth and will separate my nations, my nations from the ambassadors of Satan. Therefore, the people who stood by and heard it said it would, it was had, it sounded like thunder. Others 
an angel had spoken. The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you may have life, and that may uh, that may have it more abundantly. Yes, you will. Now, here's some links down below. I'll send you a copy of this so you can read what's been said in that, and I think you'll find it very enlightening, very eye-opening, and give you a lot more hope than you probably had in some months now. Now, this week, this coming week, is going to be a real can opener experience. We're going to get the lid cracked open, but it's going to take a lot of prayer, a lot of prophesying and a lot of seeking God to get the lid off. Once the lid's totally off, then it's going to be downhill from there. And we'll see that our enemy will have his and our angels foot on their head. You see, nothing shall hinder us because we can put Satan's head under our heel too, even today, not just because it's in the Bible, but because Jesus is alive today and he's ruling and reigning from heaven above. And what he declares and decrees on in heaven shall be declared and decreed on earth as it has been today. Be blessed. We'll let God take care of the rest. Email me, prophetsimpson at gmail.com, and I will send you all the notes, probably about five sets of different things that you'll get so that you can have something to munch on through the week. Let you be empowered by the Spirit of God. May you see with eyes that are of the Spirit. May you hear with spiritual ears and know God's will for you today. So be it. God bless you all. To all, good day.